Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to physically disable the power limit on a few different RX 9070 and 9070 XT PCBs. Uh, most of the PCB pictures are from Tech Power Up, so a big thank you to them for high res PCB pictures in their GPU reviews, and there will be links to their reviews down in the description. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Starting off with my XFX RX9070 Swift OC that I had to buy. So big thank you to the channel supporters for making the purchase possible. And on this card, in order to disable the power limit, you just need to short these two legs and these two legs. And that's it. Um, and uh, the next card is the Power Color RX 9070 Hellhound. Uh, on this card, you just need to short the legs on this chip and this chip. Um, so that's U5524 uh, and U5521. Uh, on the XFX cards, it was actually the same ones, right? U5524, U5521. Um, next, we've got the... what is this? This is the Sapphire Pulse. Um, same thing, we just have two chips, um, so U5521 over here, and where did U55, ah, there we go, U5524 down here. Um, and so far it's always been two chips, because these cards have all been just dual 8-pin cards. Um, next we've got the ASRock 9070 XT Tai Chi OC. Uh, and on this card, because we have the 12 volt high failure rate connector, uh, there's only a single chip that we need to deal with, and that's U5521 right here, and these two legs. Um, and then f we, the next card is the XFX RX 9070 XT Mercury OC Magnetic Air. This is a triple eight pin card, so it has three chips that you need to deal with in order to get rid of the power limit. Um, so again, we have U5524 and U5521, so here and here, but we also have U6824, and so that's there. Um, and then the last card we're taking a look at here is the Sapphire RX 9070 XT Nitro Plus, uh, and this is another 12-volt uh, high power card, so we only have the U5521, and right there. Um, so... That covers a few different cards. As for why this works, uh, that's very simple. Oh, actually, before we get into how this works, this is what it looks like um, when I do it. Uh, <laughs> just an ugly blob of solder, uh, you know, bridging the two legs together. Uh, if you wanted to make this a little bit more um, clever, uh, you could use a switch. Right? Instead of just a blob of solder, you could run some wires off to a switch, and then you'd have the option to turn the power limit on and off. The annoying thing is, if you have a dual 8-pin card, you can't do uh, this. Right? Like, you want one switch to, con like, to do both power connectors, you can't do that. You need two separate switches. Um, so, yeah, this, this gets really inconvenient. That, I think, is the one upside to having a 12-volt high power connector on an RX 9070 XT or a 9070, is that if you're, uh, you know, if you want to put a power limit on-off switch on the card, it's a lot more convenient if you only have one power connector to deal with. So, let's talk about why this works. So, with the RX 9000 series, AMD has started using shunt resistors for monitoring the total board power consumption and enforcing the power limit. Um, now, the shunt that we have down here on the PCIe slot doesn't actually, like, well, so the PCIe slot doesn't really power any circuitry we care about during overclocking. Um, and what I mean by that is basically all of this and all of this on this card runs off of the two 8 pins, right? And if you're pushing a 9070 XT, um, even to its like absolute limits, the power rail that is gonna see the biggest increase in power consumption is V-Core. So that's this and this. And since both of these are just hooked up to the 8 pins, we don't have to worry about this shunt resistor down here and its associated uh, like monitoring chip. So, yeah, we don't, that's like why for all of these cards, um, I'm not bothering with the PCIe slot, because as far as I can tell, on 9070s and 9070 XTs, it is standard to run all of the, like, power rails that we care about for overclocking off of the 8 pins. Um, 
So there's no reason to worry about the shunt on the PCIe slot. Now then, the shunts on the 8 pins, uh, well, you get one shunt per power connector, so, you know. Uh, and then you get one of these chips per power connector. As for what exactly these are, I have uh, some suspicions. These are probably current sensing amplifiers, um, because the way this works is this right here is a 1 milliohm uh, shunt resistor. So if we have 10 amps of current flowing into the card through the power connector, there's going to be a 10 millivolt voltage drop across the shunt resistor. So if we measure that voltage drop, we can calculate how much current is flowing through the card because the resistance of the shunt resistor doesn't change and we know what it is. Um, but the issue is 10 millivolts is kind of not very convenient to measure. So that's what uh, U5521 and 25 or so, I mean 24 are supposed to deal with is we have some filtering circuitry. So we have these two resistors right here. These are both 10 ohms. Uh, then we have some capacitors, and the way this is actually wired up is um, like this and like that. Um, and this goes to ground on this end, uh, this goes to the shunt, the other side of the shunt, and then, um, yeah, so we have some filtering capacitors because we don't actually want the power limit enforcement, like... When a GPU is running, the power consumption isn't very consistent, so you'll get something like this. And you don't really want the GPU power throttling, like, here, right? Like, because this spike over here, this is not long enough to, like, matter. Um, so we don't want to be power throttling prematurely. Uh, and then the other issue is that we are taking a very, you know, sort of low voltage signal and running it a pretty decent distance on the PCB. So, um... That's uh, another reason why we have all of this, like, like all of these capacitors and, and resistors right here is basically to clean up the voltage a little bit before it goes into the, uh, into U5521. And U5521 probably is just an amplifier, so that instead of, like, on this side we get 10 millivolts, and on some of the legs on the other side going off to the GPU, uh, will probably have something like 0 0.5 volts or more, right? Um, and at this point, this is actually like something that the GPU can actually understand instead of 10 millivolts, which is just not very uh, practical to work with. So the reason the modification works is that when you short these two legs together, that 10 millivolts of volt, you know, that 10 millivolts of voltage drop uh, across the shunt resistor uh, that we're getting over here, uh, turns into zero volts, or pretty close to zero. And so even if this is, say, a 50x amplifier, which is how you'd be getting 10 millivolts into 0.5 of a volt, well, 50 times zero is still zero. So once you short the legs, the GPU um, doesn't have a power limit because it thinks that it's not pulling any current. That's, that's that. It's not really that complicated. Now, if you have a card that I haven't, like, uh, pointed out these chips on, um, what you're looking for, like, basically, because I, fun fact, I don't have access to, well, okay, no, that's, these days I do have access to some schematics, but I do not have access to RX 9070 schematics. Uh, basically, like, I have access to schematics for GPUs that are, like, two or three years old. Um, anyway, um... So, I didn't have schematics, how did I find this? Well, uh, that's very simple. This uh, s setup right here was very suspicious to me because this is... Uh, NVIDIA cards have been using shunt resistors for power monitoring for years and years and years. And on NVIDIA cards, it's super easy to identify the chip doing the monitoring because you have uh, an INA3221, uh, and it's just labeled 3221. Um, so... Yeah, whereas, like, the markings on this, I tried putting them into Google, that doesn't really get me anywhere. Um, but, um, yeah, so on NVIDIA cards, you have a very easily identifiable chip, and it has that exact same uh, input filtering uh, setup um, in front of it. Well, actually, it's a little bit simpler on NVIDIA cards, but you get, like, a the capac this capacitor is bigger, um, and then you still get the two 10 milliohm resistors. So basically, when I saw the shunt resistors over here, I was like, well, you know, whatever chip those shunt resistors are connected to that's, like, handling the 
like in this case it's an amplifier on nvidia cards it's an actual like measurement chip like it doesn't like it just outputs a digital like hey this is what the power consumption is to the gpu instead of uh what this seems to be amplifying the voltage uh voltage level a bit but uh anyway so you know like i was looking for basically that arrangement of two resistors and a capacitor and i'm kind of lucky that i bought the xfx swift oc card because most of the other cards don't actually have that like the components that easily identifiable but anyway so once i spotted this it's like okay well we just measure from here to there and if that resistance is zero which it is actually I'm, I'm not sure if it's zero towards this shunt or if it's towards this shunt i think it's towards this shunt um but um anyway so you measure from this because well so yeah, so measuring from this side of the, the resistor to here, it's like, okay, is the resistance zero ohms? Yes. So that means this resistor has to be connected to, like the thing with the shunt resistor is that this is one milliohm, right? So like regardless of, like you can actually see where the like um, sense, like where the um, sense pads for this are, right? These are like the power pads and these are the like measurement pads. But um, anyway, this being a one milliohm shunt resistor, you can't tell from a single, like from a simple resistance measurement, which side you're actually connected to, but it also kind of doesn't matter, um, right? Like I don't care in this scenario. Um, so yeah, so it's just like, okay, take a measurement and it's like, okay, these resistors are connected to one of the eight pins. I'm not sure which one right now. Um, and then it's like, and so at that point, it's like, well, these are also 10 milli, I mean, 10 ohms. And then we have a capacitor here that's for filtering and then two more capacitors for filtering. Um, and they connect to these legs over here. So, uh, yeah, this, this got to be the like shunt monitoring circuitry. Um, and then up here, you can see the same thing, right? We got our two resistors and then it goes like this and like this. And then we got the three capacitors. Um, and you can see that on every single card. So basically what I'm trying to say is if you have a card um, that I didn't go over here, right? Because there's like, well, the Asus card for one thing is like, I'm not a hundred per the component layout on that card is a bit weird. So I don't want to try like guess from photos where the appropriate circuit is. Uh, and it's not conveniently labeled, unlike a lot of these other cards. But anyway, but so for example, on this power color card, we have the same thing where we got our resistor resistor cap cap right and th this connects like that and then it goes here and here and then to the legs um so a little bit of a sort of more awkward connection but you still have that same set of components like the two 10 ohm resistors and then the three capacitors and here you can see the same thing except i'm pretty sure the resistor the 10 ohm resistors for you know this uh, circuit are on the back of the board um, instead of so we can't see them in this photo but they're on the other side of the PCB same thing going on actually on the XFX card um, oh actually this ASRock card makes it super easy we've got our two resistors over here actually I'm not entirely certain these it looks like a trace right there okay no this might have the resistors on the back again um, but you have that you know set of three capacitors right here so there's two resistors somewhere. It might be these. They might be on the back. Doesn't really matter that much. Also, this is U5521, um, which makes it easy. But uh, with the XFX card, so ah, here we have one where you have the two resistors on the front, but you don't have the two capacitors. The capacitors are on the back. Um, and then here we have that exact same arrangement as the Power Color Hellhound card. And also, this is also the same as the Power Color Hellhound card, right? We have that uh, three capacitors, but the resistors are all on the, on the back. Um, I think on the Sapphire Nitro Plus, it's pretty easily... Yeah, so this card does it like this. Right? The... For the connection to the shunt resistors. And uh, which one did I miss? Oh, there was the pulse card from Sapphire. Yeah, so here we have the three capacitors, but the resistors are probably on the other side. 
And then down here, it looks like we might even have the resistors on the same side of the board, but the connection's probably going to be looking a bit something like this, probably. I'm not sure. I don't actually have all of these cards in hand. That's why I'm using photos from Tech Power Up. Um, but anyway, so if you're, like, trying to figure out where, like, which... What is, like, if you're trying to find the equivalent of U5524 on a card that I didn't, you know, go over here, you're basically looking for a set of three capacitors and then two 10 ohm resistors that connect to the power connectors. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's that. That's how you can uh, disable the power limit on literally any RX 9070 or 9070 XT. Um, you don't have to worry about the PCIe slot. Now, it is possible that on, like, the lower end 90 series card, like a 9060 or something, it might, you know, put one phase of E-Core on the PCIe slot or something if it only has a single 8-pin power connector. Um, and in that case, you would have to concern yourself with the PCIe slot. I would argue, though... In that case, you might want to rewire the power delivery over to the 8-pin. Um, it depends. But, um, yeah, with 9070s and 9070 XTs, you don't really have to worry about the PCIe slot power limit. You just need to do the power connectors. Um, and, yeah, and it really is as, like, you know, if you want to do it the minimum amount of effort way, um, just... Put a blob of solder on the legs. That's it. And if you want to be fancy, use a switch. So, but you do need a separate switch. Like, that's the if you have a three eight pin card, you're gonna need three separate switches, right? That's that's the unfortunate like downside to having three eight pins. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it. So hopefully you found this somewhat interesting, if not particularly useful, because of course this modification is gonna void your warranty um but uh yeah um that's that so i guess uh thanks for watching thank you to tech power up for the pcb pictures uh if you'd like to support the channel there are links in the description that you could check out that would be very much appreciated and uh that's it so thanks for watching and goodbye